Hi everybody. Substances have many properties or qualities like boiling point, conductivity, or how well they conduct electricity, and density. One group of properties are known as physical properties and chemical properties. A physical property is a property or a quality of a substance that can be observed without chemically changing the substance. So, without changing the substance, chemically, I should add. So, chemically. Now, what do I mean by a chemical change? Well, if the substance becomes a different substance, then it will be a chemical change. So over here, I said if the substance changes when the atoms rearrange, then it's a chemical change. On the other hand, if we have a physical change, the substance will stay the same in terms of composition. So its atoms will not rearrange. So for example, water or H2O will always be water as long as the atoms don't rearrange. So as long as H2O remains H2O, no matter what you do to it, then the substance will stay the same and thus it will be a physical change. So for example, if I boil water, water will just become water vapor, the gaseous form of water, but the water is still water. It just changed physical states. So in this diagram over here, um, we have liquids, and let's just say that these two dots, or these blue dots combined together, is water. So as long as water is composed of two blue dots stuck together, then water will be water. So when it's a liquid, the water molecules will be very clumped up together and constantly moving around. But once you add enough heat to it, so this is plus, ooh, that's a weird plus sign, but plus heat. If we add heat to it, then it will become a gas. Notice how boiling simply causes the water molecules to move faster, and because they move faster, they are able to leave the container, which is why gases don't have a definite shape nor volume. So, as long as you have two blue dots stuck together, you are considered water. And if you are still considered water, you are still considered the same substance. So, the substance will stay the same. And that's why boiling is a physical change. So, another physical change is hammering something. So, if you hammer a piece of metal, like these cans over here, and you hammer them into flat sheets, you are not changing the metal in any way except for, of course, the shape of it, but its composition is still made of metal. So because the metal is still made of metal, you are not changing the substance by hammering it, and thus hammering something is a physical change. So now let's look at a chemical change. What happens if I left a piece of iron outside and I left it to rest? Well, the iron, which is shown over there, will turn into iron oxide. So iron oxide when exposed to oxygen outside. Now we call this a chemical change because we are turning iron. So let me write, let me write iron and it's turning into iron oxide. And these two are different substances and because these are different substances, then we have a chemical change since, according to the definition of a chemical change, a chemical change occurs when the substance changes. So in this case, our substance went from iron to iron oxide, so it changed, and therefore, it's a chemical change. Now, let's look at another example. What if we broke water, shown as these two H2O molecules, into H2 and O2? Well, this is a chemical change as well, because we are changing the substance water into two new substances that are not water. 
And because you're changing the substance and you're rearranging the atoms, then this is also defined as a chemical change. So converting water into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas is a chemical change. And I'll talk about why I call this and this oxygen and hydrogen gas in future videos, but don't worry about that. Just think of it as oxygen, hydrogen, and water. Three very simple ways of thinking about these chemicals here. Now let's hop back aboard on the idea of physical properties. Physical properties are observed without changing the substance. So, for example, some physical properties include melting point, boiling point, solubility, or how much solute dissolves in a solvent. Malleability, which is how easily a metal or a substance deforms, and odor, which is the smell of a substance. And we observe these without chemically changing anything, because melting and boiling are physical changes, as I talked about before. How, you know, boiling water and turning it into gas is a physical change. And let's now talk about chemical properties. A chemical property is observed when a substance is changed or it's observed as, I guess, a chemical aspect, as you can call it. And you'll get used to chemical aspects of chemistry as you do more chemistry because it'll all seem obvious to you the more you do chemistry what is chemical and what is not so some chemical properties include reactivity which is the ability of a substance to change into another substance aka how well it can undergo chemical changes combustibility or the ability of a substance to react with oxygen in the air and burn up. For example, you know, combustion is basically w what happens when you light a match and it lights up and then fire shoots out. That's combustion. And radioactivity. We won't get into that, but that's just a chemical property that should be in the back of your head. Now, let's talk about a different set of properties they are called intensive or characteristic properties and extensive properties. An intensive or characteristic property is independent of the amount of substance. Now what I mean by this is that the amount of substance is unrelated to the property. So for example, density. No matter how much stuff you have, for example, if you have a small piece of ruby, I guess, because it's red, or if you have a big piece of ruby, doesn't matter how much of the ruby you have, the property, aka the density in our case, will stay the same. Because density is a measure of mass per unit volume, and that's just like a characteristic property of a substance that does not depend on its mass. Another characteristic property is melting point and color, because no matter how much substance you have, the melting point and the color will stay the same. Now, extensive properties, written over here, are properties that are related to the amount of substance. So, the most common ones are mass and volume, because the more stuff you have, like if I have more yellow rocks, I guess, because they're yellow, then you have more mass or more volume. So this mass over here is less than this mass, and this volume over here is less than this volume. And that's why mass and volume are dependent on the amount of substance. So that's why we call it an extensive property. Last but not least, let's talk about two very important laws that are related to chemistry. The law of conservation of mass states that mass cannot be created nor destroyed, so created nor destroyed, in a chemical reaction. It can only change forms. So for example, when water, 
as shown here, decomposes into hydrogen and oxygen, the masses are conserved. So in this case, let's say the masses are the atoms. So the atoms will not disappear before and after a reaction. So for example, on the left hand side, so I'll separate the reaction into two different sides. On the left hand side, we have two oxygen atoms shown in red and four hydrogen atoms shown in white. And after the reaction, we have four hydrogen atoms and two oxygen atoms. So notice how before and after a reaction, the mass is neither created nor destroyed. Instead, it is changing forms, or in other words, the atoms are rearranging. So this is a great example of the law of conservation of mass. Now let's look at the law of conservation of energy. This states that energy cannot be created nor destroyed in a reaction. It can only be converted into other forms. So, for example, the light energy that's coming from this brilliant and happy sun has light energy. So, this light energy will go into the leaf and the leaf will convert it into sugars. And some of the light energy will be released as residual heat. So notice how the light energy is converted into chemical energy in the form of sugars and heat. So energy is not created nor destroyed, it's just changing its form. So that's all for this video. Have a nice day.